Hi everyone, it's Father Ted for Father Ted Talks. Uh, welcome back to the show. Um, today on our on our program, as we have entered into the second week of Great Lent in 2022, uh, I know it's been a very long time since we've done a video, um, but uh, I get a lot of questions, as I always do during this time of the year, about fasting. And since we've never done a program about fasting, um, I want to speak a little bit about uh, about this uh, this kind of practice that we have within the church. It's a really important practice. Um, its purposes, its rules, and its exemptions. Those are kind of the main topics we want to cover uh, today uh, during the video. So, um, okay, so like, what is fasting, right? Because like, for anybody who knows anything about the Orthodox Church, they'll know that, um, you know, we do a lot of fasting, like a lot of fasting. If you take, if you take into consideration all the days that we fast during the year, uh, usually Orthodox Christians fast Wednesdays and Fridays, generally throughout the whole year, except for some exemptions. Uh, we also have the great fasts, um, which is 40 days for Christmas, 40 days for Easter. Um, there's the Apostles Fast, which kind of shifts depending on the, the calendar of where Easter falls. There is the, um, the Dormition fa Fast in, uh, in August, which is uh, August 1st to the 15th, well, to the 14th, um, to the Dormition of the Virgin Mary. And of course, there are some other sporadic fasts as well, like, for example, the Adoration of the Holy Cross in September and things like that. So if you take all those days together, we are actually fasting for about half the days of the year, which is quite a bit of fasting. Um, what is the purpose of this? Like, why do this, right? So in the Orthodox Church, for those of you who don't know, uh, fasting doesn't mean not eating anything at all, although there are some, uh, there can be aspects of that as well. But generally speaking, fasting for the Orthodox Christians is um, um, a changed or modified diet going from basically eating anything you want to uh, fully vegan, right? So no meat, no dairy products. Uh, and in many cases, no oil. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, you know, what is the purpose of this? Well, the purpose is, is, is actually freedom. And what do I mean by freedom? What is the purpose of, uh, of how does it make us free? How does fasting make us free? Well, um, a lot of people, they feel that, um, you know, fasting or fasting rules, a fasting regiment actually kind of makes you a slave. Uh, people who criticize uh, churches or organized religion will say, well, you know, I'm free to do whatever I want. I'm free to live the way I want and eat whatever I want and do whatever I want. Uh, and so people who follow these types of rules, they're actually enslaving themselves to, you know, the church, organized religion, whatever, you know, whatever you follow. Uh, and the church would say that it's actually the opposite, that the perspective of the church is that, um, you know, the goal or one of the main goals of a human being is truly to be free and that type of freedom only comes when the heart the soul and the mind are more powerful and they actually dictate what our body does right so our body should be following what our mind tells us it should do um, and our soul and our spirit and so uh, when our bodies tell us what to do for example when we have uh, physical uh, urges to do something for example I'm hungry I want to eat something um, you know I'm thirsty I want to drink uh, I'm tired I want to sleep you know, when we do these things, of course, these are not bad things, but when those physical things control us and they dictate our behavior, then we are actually slaves uh, to those things. So I'll give you an example. Um, if I can't say no to, for example, a juicy, delicious hamburger on a Wednesday when I'm supposed to be fasting, if I can't, you know, tell myself that I'm strong enough to abstain from that, even for one day, then that burger, which is an inanimate object, it's not even a human being, it's not even something with a, with a mind that can manipulate me, it's just a thing, that thing controls me. I bow down to it. I have to eat it. I can't stop myself. I have a compulsion. One could say I even have an addiction uh, to that one thing, and I can't stop myself from eating it, right? So if I can't say no to just a very basic thing, then how am I expected to say no to other things? For example, evil thoughts in my mind, evil actions, words, and things that come out of my mouth. So uh, the church is saying, well, we train ourselves very much in the same way as we train ourselves in a gym. We, we constantly train ourselves to say no to certain things, not because those things are necessarily evil, but that we want to kind of get into the habit, right? Um, you know, cultivate that strength within us to be able to abstain whenever we want to abstain and for whatever reason. So we fast to kind of keep ourselves in check. Of course, uh, fasting is not just only about food, it's also about the things we think, the things we say, the things we do, but it is the very basic, most fundamental level, right? The things that we eat and we drink, uh, you know, we regulate that. So fasting actually sets us free. It emancipates us 
from those things which would enslave us in life, right? Really, really important. So that is really the purpose of fasting, right? It's, 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 it's to free us, right? Um, there are also secondary and just as important aspects to fasting. St. John Chrysostom, for example, reminds us that fasting is really also uh, to remember the poor, uh, to take the money that we would be spending on more rich and expensive food, such as meat and dairy, and not to put it in our pocket or to save it, but rather to give that food money away to the poor or to give that food that we would have been eating to give it away to the poor so that there is a distribution um, of charity to those who are in need. So that's also a really important part of Lent as well and all the fasting seasons that Christians should not only be abstaining and you know training themselves to be strong mentally, spiritually, right? Uh, but also um, to be able to give and to increase their giving during that time. So this is the main purpose of of uh, the great fast and also all the fasting in the church. Uh, so what are the rules? You know, uh, what are the rules uh, for doing this? Well, uh, it's very simple. Uh, the, I guess you could say, if you go by the book, which is like the, the, the most ideal form of the fast, then usually we are, we are fasting uh, vegan. So no meat, no, no type of meat. So any meat that has blood in it, right? That would be, you know, red meat, chicken, uh, most fish, right? Uh, anything that has blood in it. Uh, shellfish is an exemption because it doesn't have blood. So for, for example, shrimp or mussels, things like that. Um, those things don't have blood in them. You can eat those uh, during the fasting period, but generally speaking, anything that has blood, we stay away from. And also uh, no dairy, so no milk, no cheese, anything that has dairy in it, um, eggs, things like that, cheeses. Um, so, and also, uh, if you really wanna go more strict, and there are some days, if you wanna go to like the full fast, is that there are certain days where even oil is restricted. So for example, in the great fast right now, Technically, you know, if you really want to do the full, I don't want to say perfect fast, but from a, from a, from a food point of view, um, you know, uh, the, I guess the most um, complete fast that you could do would be no meat, no dairy. And then during the week, there would be no oil. And only on the weekends would you have oil. So, that, you know, that, that is very, very difficult. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be difficult. It's not, it's not supposed to be easy. And yes, it is true that, um, you know, in a mostly agrarian culture in the ancient days and in, for example, medieval times, uh, it would have been a little bit easier because people did not eat meat as much as we eat now because they didn't have access to it. They didn't have supermarkets. You know, if you want to eat meat, you would have to slaughter an animal and eat it. So they would only eat meat on high feast days anyways. And they would be mostly a vegetarian, um, you know, uh, diet for most people in those days. And so it wasn't a big deal to let go of the meat, but the milk and the cheese, things like that, and the oil, that would have been much harder. Um, and so, yes, it is a little bit harder for us to kind of switch gears uh, in fasting uh, in our kind of common era. And yet we still have this call to do this. Um, and uh, we try to do it the best we can. Um, you know, these kind of different levels of fasting are just uh, different ways of kind of uh, exercising our own free will over our material being. Uh, and of course there are different levels. Now, um, you know, there are a lot of questions about this, right? Like, so what about exemptions? Um, I'll go through a few questions that usually come up. One of them is about oil, for example, you know, they say, father, you know, is it all types of oils? Because, you know, is it only olive oil that we abstain from if I am abstaining from oil or, you know, is it all oils, canola oil, vegetable oil, uh, you know, flaxseed oil. There's so many different oils now. Right. And I always say, and you're going to get different kind of answers to this, especially on the internet where there's so much on there. Uh, but as I understand it, and of course I could be wrong, um, is that it's not the issue of different types of oil. It's the issue of oil itself. Now, without getting into the intricacies or the kind of um, excuses that we kind of make up about why uh, we don't eat oil and uh, you know, all it is, is that it is just one more stricter level of fasting, right? Like if you're fasting vegan, but you can use oil, there are a lot of foods that you can still prepare. We call in Greek, ladera, things that are prepared with oil uh, that you can eat. But when you restrict oil, any type of oil, then you really limit, you drastically limit even the fasting foods that you can eat because now, you know, you're eating a lot of more raw foods, raw vegetables, things that are boiled with water, but not with oil and things like that. So it's a lot harder to cook and you're restricting even more food, right? Uh, it's not the issue of what types of oils because in our modern age, we have different types of oils, but in the ancient times, they only had one type of oil and that is olive oil. They were not aware or had invented other types of oils. And so really when they said oil in the times when these kind of fasting rules were put into place, they meant olive oil and they meant basically all oil that was available to them at the time, right? So we shouldn't get into the kind of um, the minutia of, um, you know, what type of oils we are using today. The point is it's oil. So when people ask me, well, Father, if I'm going to restrict oil in my fasting regimen, 
uh, what type of oil should I restrict? I say, well, all oil, right? You're, it doesn't matter which, which, which type you're using. Now you're going to hear some people say, well, the reason why olive oil was restricted in the old days was because it was, it was, it was um, sometimes stored in animal skins. And of course, animal skins, the oils from the meat, of, of, uh, sorry, the, the animal product, byproducts of the oil coming into contact with animal skins would contaminate and things like that. Uh, I don't think that this um, argument holds much water historically because the Orthodox Christians always were not so caught up about contamination, things like that. These are kind of pharisaical, um, you know, explanations, you know, that we can't eat oil because it's contaminated by, by meat and things like that. That's not the reason. The reason was is that it was a more strict restriction on, on what we're eating, right? So today, if somebody says I'm going to restrict oil or they choose to restrict oil, then they should be restricting all oil, not I'm going to cook with a ton of canola oil. Uh, or with vegetable oil or things like that or margarine, but I'm not going to use olive oil. You're doing the same thing, really. Um, you're just switching the type of oil that you're consuming. Um, so those are kind of the basic rules, right? Like, you know, the, the, a fasting, we fast Wednesdays and Fridays, you know, Wednesday because it is the betrayal of Judas, Fridays because the crucifixion. We commemorate those low points in human history by fasting. We fast, you know, our, our generic, um, you know, um, great fasts. And also, um, you know, if people can't keep track of them, there are like really, really good Orthodox apps right now. For example, there is this really good app from the Archdiocese of America um, called Daily Readings. And basically it's, um, it gives you, uh, you know, whether you're fasting, it, it tells you like what are the saints of the day, uh, what are the gospel readings or, or biblical readings of the day. Uh, it gives you morning and evening prayers and all the prayers, but it also tells you uh, what is happening. So for example, I open up my little app today you know, it's, it's, it's on my iPhone there. It's right here in the center. It's called Daily Readings. When I click on it, it opens up. And you'll see here on the top, it says fasting. And when I open it, it tells me exactly that it's a strict fast today. It says refrain from eating meat, fish, oil, wine, dairy, and eggs, right? And it gives you a little rundown of, uh, you know, why we fast and the reason for fasting. So it's really easy to keep track of what the fasting rules are for the church and what days we're fasting, what days we're not fasting. So there's really no excuse for not knowing since we there are multiple apps that do this right now and calendars that we have um, and even reminders that we can put in our in our, in our, our smartphones and things like that and our, in our, our laptops and stuff like that. So um, as far as exemptions are concerned, right? So we talked about the purpose, we talked about uh, the main fasting rules, uh, but also the exemptions, right? So what do I mean by exemptions? Well, um, the important thing to remember about fasting is that there is a spirit of fasting. And what do I mean by that? That the Orthodox always look at the spirit of why we do things, not to the letter of the law, right? Of course, we have fasting rules. Of course, we have guidelines because without a structure, then we don't know what we're doing. We can't kind of work towards a goal. But within that structure, there are always exemptions. And why? Because every human being is different and there are different um, kind of situations. And even in the Pidalion, which is the rudder, the, the book that kind of um, is a compilation of all the canons that exist within the church over the last two, two, uh, two millennia, uh, we see that there are even exemptions, um, you know, provided for there. So, for example, um, some exemptions are that if somebody is sick, like if somebody is suffering from a disease, the canons say that we should not be fasting, right? Uh, or there should be a modified fast based on whatever your spiritual father, the person that you confess to, uh, you, know, um, you know, prescribes to you. Um, and so if you're sick, you shouldn't be doing that. Women who are, are, are pregnant or breastfeeding should be exempt from fasting because it can affect their pregnancy, of course. It can, it can affect their nursing of their, of their newborn infants, things like that. So women who are nursing and, and, and breastfeeding and also uh, who are pregnant should not be fasting. Um, you know, sometimes there are other requirements, like, you know, medical requirements. Like, for example, there are a lot of elderly people who need to take pills in the morning, right? Need to take medications. And a lot of those medications require to have sometimes something very basic like maybe a piece of toast or you know drink some water or something before they go to liturgy on a sunday and a lot of people say well father you know i have to take my pills in the morning i have to eat something and now i feel like i cannot take communion in the morning because i was supposed to be fasting before i go to church and of course my response is well if it's for a medical reason you should take your pills you should eat whatever the doctor tells you to eat at least the bare minimum and then you should go take communion because the the point of fasting is not to make us sick it's not to become an end in itself right it's not about the letter of the law it's about the spirit right so as long as we are not kind of breaking our fast for selfish reasons for reasons of losing self-control but they are good reasons uh or sometimes medical reasons then then there's no problem with that that's not really kind of ruining quote unquote our fast right so you know there are exemptions and my my advice would always be always speak with your local priest speak with your confessor ask them what um you know what you should be doing uh if you're new 
uh, either to the faith or you're new to fasting. Like maybe you grew up Orthodox, but you never fasted, your family never fasted, and you don't know what to do. Um, speak to your priest first. Don't try to do it on your own um, because it's exactly the same thing as walking into, for example, uh, a gym and try to bench press 200 pounds on the first try. It's not going to work and you could also hurt yourself. So um, it's important that, you know, the priest would tell you, hey, if you've never fasted before, maybe we kind of ease you into it. Start this great fast with not eating meat, but eating dairy and see how you go with that. And if that goes well, then of course you can always, uh, you know, move up and add, um, you know, dairy on the next fast and so on and so on. And, you know, you build up to, you know, the best you can do as far as uh, your fasting goes. So there are always exemptions to the rules and the exemptions are always there uh, to guide people towards, um, you know, their spiritual uh, growth and to help them, you know, achieve better self-control over their bodies um, by exercising their free will and fasting. And, um, and, and that's why we should never be speaking about our fasting to other people. We should never be bragging. We should never be discussing these things because everybody has, um, you know, their own kind of discussion with their spiritual father. Um, and also that's why we should never judge and we should never look, you know, at what other people are eating during the great fast or any of the fasting seasons because we don't know what guidelines they've received and what blessings they've received from their confessors or spiritual fathers uh, to fast, right? So it's none of our business what other people are doing. The only business we have is to look at ourselves and what we're doing as fasting is a very personal thing. So, you know, that's uh, that's ba the basic kind of um, aspects of uh, fasting that I want to cover in this video. Uh, the purpose, you know, to free ourselves, to emancipate ourselves from the things that would control us, to have, you know, our mind and our soul to be more powerful than our body. Um, you know, the rules, basically vegan if you're going to fast, sometimes without oil, and the exemptions always to discuss with your spiritual father, with your local priest, uh, if you have medical exemptions and things like that, or other issues that need to be taken into account when trying to implement uh, your fasting. So um, that is um, that is all. I hope that this video was a little bit uh, helpful, especially now as we are in the kind of in the, the beginnings of the Great Lenten journey. We're in the second week. And uh, I pray, pray that everybody has a blessed uh, remainder of, of the Great Lenten uh, fast and that we come to our Lord's Passion and Resurrection uh, with an open heart and an open mind. God bless you, and we'll see you next time on Father TED Talks. Take care. Mm -hmm.